an El Nino watch has been issued and this one could be one of the stronger ones on record. So let's start off with the overall sea surface temperature anomalies, which are going to be the driving force that's going to get us to that El Nino. So let's take a look at this and here's the overall setup. You can actually see these warmer than average temperatures up here into the North Pacific Oscillation. That is your warm blob. And here is the leftover, what they call PDO, which is your Pacific Decadal Oscillation. This is the La Nina that we've been trapped in for the last three years. That was down here into the Equatorial Pacific. But now that is replaced with all these well above average temperature anomalies. You can actually see this rapid surge across portions of South America here, and that is a continuing to build. And of course, we still have well above average temperature anomalies here in the Gulf of Mexico. What typically happens is this ridge elevates further north up in Alaska, and then when it dips, it's able to dip further south into the base of this trough down here into the Baja of California. And that comes across coupled with the warmer than average sea surface temperature anomalies down here south of Hawaii. That's going to activate the subtropical jet stream. And then when that does and all these elevated sea surface temperatures up here in the Gulf of Mexico, that increases the rain probabilities for the southern plains as well as increases the severe weather chances going forward as well. So let's take a look at this El Nino watch. This has now been issued by the Enzo Alert system, has now a 62% chance of this developing in the next month. And it's gonna be continuing to develop. And there's a lot of signs out there that it could actually be one of the stronger ones on record you can take a look at the longer some of the longer range guidances here now some of the stronger ones on record was back in 2015 2016 also 97 and 98 and both of those instances had enzo enzo warmer than average temperatures above two degrees and you can see where this is going to be topping out at somewhere around the two possibly even stronger than that so really at this point all indications are especially by the time we reach the fall and the winter months this could very well be a moderate if not almost strong el nino and you can see the current trend is where we've been drifting all the way down south from from the la nina type conditions and it's never a straight line and we're basically what they often refer to as now Enzo neutral. And you can see the latest dip. We've seen a little bit of a dip in the action. No line is ever straight up. We've had some little bit cooler than average temperature anomalies come back, but that looks to be short lived as we're now we're gonna be seeing another westerly burst down here into the, the western, the, in the Pacific here with these western westerly winds coming back with these above average temperature anomalies coming back. So we'll start to see that trend start to go upward again in the, in the coming weeks going forward. So let's take a look at the setup, kind of a break this thing down for you. So as these systems come across, you can actually see the dip and in, in the overall trough. And this is your water vapor transport index. This is actually going into the Thursday time frame. You can actually see that it comes across and picks up, picks up some of this moisture down here in the subtropical jet. The difference is it puts a lot of this water vapor actually further west. We've seen so many systems over the last several months don't really start until east of the I-35 corridor. That's not going to be the case. And it's going to be trending much further west. And what that's going to be able to do is going to be slowly eating away these drought conditions down here in the southern plains and into the central plains going forward. You can see the setup for today where they do, in fact, have that severe weather probabilities out here in far west texas places like odessa back into midland even portions of new mexico <laughs> this area is really bone dry getting into the panhandle of texas into western oklahoma back here into kansas these areas have not seen little to no rain really for much of the year and they're going to be seeing a big change going forward so even into tomorrow that system drifts a little bit further off to the east and that amplifies the subtropical jet we've got a little bit more water vapor temperatures start to rise so we're seeing the beginning stages of this transformation of a much more wetter and much more active type pattern going forward for the month of may it looks to be very active 
uh, for this upcoming month and for today, for going into tomorrow, that dry line gets a little bit closer back here into Texas and Oklahoma. We should see uh, supercell thunderstorms start to light up across this dry line and then propagate eastward and then weaken as they continue to move a little bit further east towards the DFW Metroplex. But here's the overall drought index and it's been pretty prevalent. I mean, yeah, so it's down here in the in, down here into Florida. We, we've been still dealing with those those drought conditions down there, but especially up here in the plains that back here into West Texas, Western Oklahoma, Western Kansas, back here in portions of Nebraska. This has the most significant drought of any part of the country. So we've had some help as of late back here in the California, but it took about three, four, almost five months to slowly eat away these droughts. So this is not just a flip the switch and happens overnight. This slowly eats away over time. But what we're looking at is, is likely the beginning stages of this. And so we come back four months from now, I can almost promise you this drought area right here it's going to be you know basically almost next to nothing as as the drought conditions will be slowly eaten away you know over time so the transformation going into saturday this is the first time we've seen elevated uh, dew points as high as we've seen these so the higher they're able to get there's more moisture content in that atmosphere and as this active subtropical jet uh, really starts to uh, you know come across then we're going to be setting ourselves up into a much more active time frame, and it's going to be the atmosphere is going to be like a sponge, and it's not going to take much to wring out some heavier rainfall and setting ourselves up for more ample opportunities for possibly severe storms, and some of those you know could be tornadic storms. So here's the overall setup. So we've got again the warm blob up here into the north pacific oscillation you got the cooler than average sea surface anomalies off here off the west coast that brings a little bit cooler conditions inland but it's also dropping these troughs a little bit further south and here's the base of the trough down here into portions of the baja of california so the further that dips it's able to tap into these subtle input pulses further south so you're going to have these systems coming in out ahead of the main low pressure center so that's going to amplify and increase the rain probabilities and also increase the severe severe storms over a probably a two to three day time span you know going forward so these systems are going to be probably a little bit more slower moving systems they're going to be lasting a lot longer than they normally would and then they don't have much time in between systems as well as we see another system coming in back behind this one so the time frame in between systems are going to be shortened so that way over time it's going to be increasing these rain probabilities and severe weather chances across the southern plains and the central plains and across portions of the southeast you can actually see it i don't see anything like say massive widespread outbreak but i definitely see storm chances pretty much almost every single day with this active setup kind of going forward here's the setup on friday pretty much puts it over the southern plains back into the portions of arkansas into missouri and then heading into the weekend we have these again these subtle impulses that come out come out ahead of the main low pressure center will be activated and some of these set, you know send off outflow boundaries the day before will set the set the stage for where these storms are going to be outlined you know for that particular day so yeah, this setup is pretty much going to be very active as we're leaning towards, you know, daily storm chances down here in this region kind of going forward. So if we look at the longer range guidance going into next week, we can definitely see the moisture levels are coming back. We have that active trough coming in and this puts this whole area through the 10th and the 12th time frame with heavy precipitation across a good part of Texas, Oklahoma, back into Kansas, and then Missouri, into Arkansas, back into Louisiana, of course, portions of, you know, good chunk of the Southeast here with just heavier precipitation. And the same thing is implying on the Climate Prediction Center kind of going forward. So we, we see this more active subtropical jet, these well above average, you know, precipitation anomalies coming into this region this is typically one of your wetter times of the year and that's going to be definitely playing out going forward and yes even beyond that through again that 10th through that 16th that second week and getting towards the middle of may 
This puts this whole area across the southern plains and the southeast with well above average temperatures and also, you know, well above average precipitation anomalies. And I do feel the deeper we get into May, we're going to be starting to see these these dew points surge further north as well. So here's what we've been in. So we've been in this La Nina for really for the past three years. We're already seeing the beginning stages and we saw that actually coming out of it finally. We finally let go back in the middle of March, but so basically in April, we've had these Enzo neutral type setup, but it's been predominantly dry across a good part of the South and much. This is where you've seen all these drought stricken areas, but that's gonna be changing. So we're technically not in an El Nino quite yet, but you're, we're gonna be find ourselves making a transition to that El Nino type setup. We're gonna have these more active, more persistent, Pacific jet streams, more amplified systems coming across. Just you saw those temperatures south of uh, Hawaii there. And as it does come across, it's able to pick up, you know, the, the Pacific moisture, the, the, the Gulf moisture, more active subtropical jet. The troughs are going to be digging down a little bit further down here in the base of the trough down here towards the Baja. That is all going to be setting the stage for, you know, well above average precipitation going forward for the southern branch of the jet stream and then you have the northern branch is going to be lifting a little bit further north you're gonna have the polar jet coming down so that typically brings a little bit cooler than average conditions more or less down here into this region and then we have this kind of warm blob trying to form this again this won't happen for maybe a couple of months from now as the el nino will be more persistent this is more likely going to be late summer go back into fall as we transition into those months so we're at the beginning stages of going into that type setup so going forward for the next 10 days you can see what we're working with so we had all those well above well below average temperatures coming out of the great lakes that'll feed into the cooler than average temperatures you know for the next 10 days across a good part of the carolinas as well as in the northeast those below average temperatures down here off the west coast will bleed into with this trough out here off the west coast bringing them cooler than normal conditions and again, we've got that trough digging down. We've got the more amplified subtropical jet. And with the south wind, the south wind is going to be able to surge these temperatures further north. And I think all these areas across the central states will be well above average temperatures. And here's typically where you see the most tornadic activity going into the month of May. May is your one of your active months. So with this more amplified subtropical jet going forward, we're going to have a lot of moisture to work with. So yes, that is only going to enhance these areas across Tornado Alley, across a good part of the Southern and Central Plains. So definitely be on high alert out here in Tornado Alley as we're looking for more, more of an active May, you know, going forward as in a wetter May as well. So you can see for the next 16 days, this really blanks the precipitation across a good part of the Southern Plains as well as in the Southeast. With the, with the trough out west, obviously that brings some of the rains back in for California. But again, it still has the northern branch fairly wet as well across a good part of Montana, back in here and through the Dakotas. And then, yes, going forward, I think as we get beyond the middle of May, I think as this will be, you know, slowly moistening up the levels, you know, all the way through the plains, I think eventually by the time we get into that third week of May, yeah, we could be looking at dew point surging in the 60s all the way to Canada, guys. And so this whole area will be under the gun for potential severe weather across a good part of the Central Plains. And especially the northern branch will get a little bit more active, too. And possibly it's trying to beginning stages of some derecho type setups as well. You can actually see this in some of the longer range guidance headed into the possibly that fourth week of May we start to see these little these troughs setting up further north across a good part of the Dakotas and the upper Midwest. And that's going to be setting the stage for the severe storms as well as those amplified dew points further north. So there's going to be plenty of the moisture to feed those storms. You can bet you we're going to be looking for, you know, pop, you're going to be on high alert up here uh, for for portions of the, the northern northern plains as well as into the upper Midwest for all three modes of severe storms by then. But overall, the trend is basically where we're at. So we're starting to see overall below average temperature anomalies out west. 
a little bit slightly below average temperature anomalies out here across portions of the east but in the middle we've got the surge and the surge with the south wind and i think this whole area will be well above average uh but, but by the time we get into the you know by the end of the month of may and going into june we see the, the same setup. So we start to see a little bit more what they call Northwest flow type setups that comes in off the Rockies. We're gonna be coming, you know, the amplified systems coming off the Rocky Mountains and those dive Southeast. So, and then also at the same time with these troughs coming building further North, those also bring down dive to the Southeast. So that's gonna bring the above average precipitation across a good part of the central and eastern two-thirds of the u.s that'll be going into the month of june so guys i appreciate you guys uh, watching if you like this video and found value hit the subscribe button i'm almost up to 175,000 followers i greatly appreciate each and every one of you so you can be a part in helping me get there and so catch me the next update why i protect you before and after storm